Welcome again to Linear Optimization, and we're going to talk about relative cost. Relative cost is essentially a measure of the cost to take something that's not in my basis, one of my, row, my column vectors, and to put it in the basis. So how much does it cost to increase that variable, essentially? Linear Optimization, we're going to talk about relative And now we're going to consider the cost vector. So remember our, our optimization function, cost. Our goal is to minimize the dot product of C and X going to talk about relative cost. So let's fix the basic feasible solution. Let's just look at the one we're currently at where we're using a, cur a, a certain basis, script db. What we want to do is compute the relative cost for the jth column. So for a column aj, which is not in the basis, we now want to compute a number, actually a measure of the... So our number is going to be cj bar it's going to be called the relative cost for the column J. And it's going to be the cost of that column. So as I'm increasing the value of that, that column, it's going to add this to the cost, this times that much. But then also, we're going to make this amount of change, this xij change, to the other columns of the basis. So the ith column of the basis is going to be changed by this xij amount. And that's making this much effect on the cost. This term here, is so important we call it, we have its, our own name for it, and it's called ZJ. So this term here we'll just refer to as ZJ. And in, in general, the vector of all Z1s through ZN, uh, ZMs is, uh, sorry, ZN, I mean N of them, because one for every J, this number will be important. Observe this formula does hold over the basis columns. If I think about cj bar, I'm going to take cj and then I'm going to subtract these things. But if this actually appears, if this column appears in the basis, then what happens is I get zeros here except for the jj position, and then I would get a 1 times the cost. And so it ends up being 0. Okay? So this is 0. So this relative cost is zero for basis columns, the whole thing, not just this term. So these, this subtraction is zero. What we're going to do is we're going to keep track of these numbers as we're doing our search. And the idea is that these, are, these numbers are going to tell us which are the directions that we want to go in order to find a better solution. The basis. So how Moreover, we're going to be able to determine when we are at an optimal solution by looking at the relative costs the cost to increase that variable, essentially. Take a moment to soak that in. So this theorem, it's 2.8 in the textbook, it's our optimality condition. So just remember that this is our optimality condition. What we've done is we've fixed a breadth, uh, basic feasible solution, x0, and I'm going to perform a pivot step. So remember, a pivot step is I'm going to take a column from my matrix which isn't in the basis and I want to bring it into the basis and drop something out. So I'm moving from a BFS to a new BFS and I wanted to enter the basis and I want to say that I know what happens to the cost. So when I do this, I want to change the cost by this amount. So theta zero, remember, was the amount that I'm making the variable xj be, right? I'm increasing xj from zero to theta zero while maintaining a feasibility. And then I'm going to multiply that by the relative cost that we've previously computed. So you think about it again as C sub J, which is the cost vector value of XJ, minus how much cost it's giving us on the ZJ. Okay. So essentially what we want to think about it is that CJ is the amount of cost per unit of, AJ, of XJ. So as XJ is increasing, this is how much the cost is changing relative to that amount of change. Right. Furthermore, at the very end, if I look at the relative costs as a vector of n values, well, that's equal to the cost vector minus the z vector. But if it's coordinate-wise non-negative, that means that for every j, this is a negative number. I'm sorry, this, for every j, this is a non-negative number. And because it's non-negative, as I increase theta, I'm going to be increasing my cost function. But remember, we're trying to minimize the cost function. 
So if I have C sub J bar always non-negative, then I'm only going to, no matter which direction I go, I'm only going to be increasing the cost function. I want to lower the cost. So if I have this condition, then this is an optimal basic feasible solution. So what we're going to try to do is try to find so what we're going to try to do is find a basic feasible solution such that this optimality condition holds. And once we are there, we have found our optimal and we can stop.